Hello, today's video is all about shooting film. Now, I grew up in a time where we didn't have digital cameras, we used to shoot film all the time, probably a decade of my professional career was spent shooting film. And so when digital progressed, I was actually quite happy to leave film behind. It took a while, but I was quite happy to, to leave it behind. I didn't shoot film for a long time. The reason for this video today is, isn't to talk about all the different cameras that are available, or all the different film types, all the different moods, and this rising kind of enthusiasm for shooting film, and you know, pursuing the grain and the analog feel and all of that kind of stuff. They're all byproducts as far as I'm concerned. These cameras that you see before me are ones that I have just kind of have, have somehow ended up in my office. Now, people have given them to me. I bought this one at a car boot sale. I bought both of these cameras 25 years ago, or I can't even remember how long ago, a long time ago, when, I, when we were shooting film for various different purposes. And they've just kind of stuck around. Now, you know, the, the, the byproduct of shooting film is that you, you have access to these really rather lovely, um, pieces of equipment for not a great deal of money on the second hand market and they're really rather capable and they're charming to own you know that's the sort of byproduct of shooting film also the byproduct is that you can create some incredible aesthetics which people are pursuing you know quite it has quite a lot of uh, enthusiasm for that for that kind of genre now of shooting film but the main reason that I want to talk to you today is not about that, it's about the main core thing of photography now, which is capturing the spirit of a time, capturing an ephemeral moment and kind of having it as a, as a, as a memory. And one of the problems, while digital cameras are incredible and I shoot digital, you know, for, for nearly every project, project that I do, digital SLRs, um, iPhones, you know, these things are incredible for capturing memories, but there's a big problem that the pictures stay on the iPhone and then you might put one or two on social media, you might even print them out if you're very efficient. I, I, I'm guilty of not always doing that. And then they get transferred over to a hard drive and quite often they get backed up if you're, if you're sensible, they will. Um, and sometimes the pictures get taken off and something worthwhile gets done with them. But more often than not, and others will d deal with this differently, certainly in my case, quite often a lot of my pictures just get kind of left in here and then they, 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 they might not ever see the light of day. And that's a shame. And bearing in mind that I've now got 32 terabytes of, um, of images or somewhere like that in my, in my archive with hundreds of thousands of pictures on them, you know, will they ever see the light of day <laughs> is, a, is, a, is, a, is another question. And I'm constantly looking at different ways of making sure that my workflow uh, doesn't allow for good pictures and good memories to kind of be forgotten. But it doesn't always work. And sometimes big chunks of history just kind of get archived and forgotten about. And that's cool because sometimes you will go back over time and look at those pictures. But as cameras file sizes increase and frame rates increase and the ability to shoot thousands of pictures on these things increases, you know, will we always do that or not? It's, it's kind of quite a big question, I suppose. And so I found a couple of rolls of film and I'm not going to show you the pictures because they're quite personal because it's just a, a day out of my family. But we were going out for the day and I just picked this camera up on the spur of the moment put a roll of film in it, roll of out of date print film, and thought I'm just gonna use this camera really casually, and I did. I just kind of walked around and, oh look at that, and took, took pictures of the day, nothing too kind of creative, just, just used it, you know, sparingly, and I think I shot 30 frames or something, which is kind of like a lot less than I would have shot if I'd been going out with one of my digital cameras. I'd have probably shot hundreds. And put the film in an envelope and sent it away to be processed. And then the best part is that you get this kind of, like this few days or a week of expectation of uh, looking forward to getting the envelope back. And it, it took me right back to the beginning of my days as a photographer where everything had to sort of pretty much go through the lab. You can process these films yourself it's a whole nother story, I'm not going to go into that now, but having the, the envelope come back can be part of the, the, the charm because you're waiting for it and also the, the lab will print you 36 or however many frames you've shot, really lovely little prints. And you know, they're just beautiful. They come back 
and it's a really lovely thing. You get excited about it and you get them out and you kind of look through them and you can show them around to people. And the, even the ones that are kind of dark and gloomy, it doesn't really matter because it's just kind of cool. You know, that um, they're memories and you could put them in an album or you could keep them or you could digitize them or you could do whatever you want, but you've got something that's real and it's kind of important to have things that are real. And sometimes I forget to do that. And I, I, I sort of drown in electronic images and I forget to actually take anything that's real from it. And that's what happens with this. And so I wanted to pass on this thought process that I've been having to people that, you know, no matter how, what, no matter what you're doing, no matter how much you're into photography in terms of digital and post-production, um, it might be worth just like looking in your understairs cupboard and seeing if there's one of these things that you were left by um, somebody once or if there's one in a car boot sale or in on eBay that you might be able to pick up. And you know here we have a, a Yaishka T3 which I think is actually really like that they're actually increasing in value I think now. And an Olympus Trip you know they're really lovely things to um, to own quite simplistic. You can obviously get much more complicated film cameras as well. But the great thing with these is, is it's simple. And so you kind of get that really, even though the quality might not be great. And actually the quality is quite good, I think. I've been quite surprised by how all of these cameras work and the, the picture quality that comes from them. And obviously there's expense because these, these aren't cheap. You have to buy rolls of film and get them processed. But then nothing with photography is cheap. And you know, memory cards are expensive, digital cameras are expensive, software is expensive and inkjet or printing materials are expensive you know all of those things cost money and so it's up to you to decide what it is that how you spend your own money but there's something really rather beautiful I think it costs like 10 pounds to have these pr to have these printed which is obviously you know not not an inconsiderable cost but what a lovely thing to have for the rest of your life you know and there was a time when people would have had shoe boxes full of these and I do still have shoe boxes full of these and it's just a lovely thing to go through those shoe boxes and actually have something that's real rather than just you know a hard drive full of data that is is very real and you can produce prints from but it's just whether or not you ever dip into it to do it i look at a lot of pictures every day and sometimes i'm less inclined to spend an evening for example going through looking for um, old pictures of, of my children for example because you know I've, I'm kind of done with pictures by that point and so you know I just wanted to throw that out there to you as a way of ensuring that you have a few memories that are real because th this is I'll tell this very brief story that I was talking to somebody the other day who had two young children and he told me how he loved taking pictures of them and he'd used, only used his, his iPhone, but his memory was always full and his iCloud was getting full with all of these pictures that he'd taken of children and he really didn't know what to do. And I, it began to make me think, well, you have, ha, do you have a photo album <laughs> of pictures of your children, like the 20, 20 different pictures of them over the course of their life have you got that real backup you know and he, he, he hadn't and so I said to him you must just choose 20 it doesn't have to be the best 20 just choose 20 and just get them printed it doesn't have to be the best prints in the world just so that you've got something that's real because otherwise if the iCloud does have a problem or you're, you lose your iPhone or both that could that could all of that could just be gone so easily and so that's the point of my video today, that maybe just grab a roll of film, grab a camera from somewhere, go out and capture the essence of your time, your family, your friends, your loved ones, your sport, your pastime, whatever it is that you're doing. Capture it simply on a simple camera with a simple roll of film, have it processed simply, sit back and wait for the envelope to, to, to arrive back to you and then enjoy looking through the prints and um, you'll have a little slice of history uh, for yourself to keep. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been of some interest to you and um, please do consider subscribing if you like this kind of content and I will be back soon with another video. So thank you very much. Goodbye.